Mr Richard Holden. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. And um, I think I'll reflect the comments of others who have spoken today in saying that to speak in the same chamber as President Zelensky has just spoken in is, uh, puts everything in, into perspective uh, at every level. But today I want to speak about a topic that is dear to the heart of my constituents. And I'm glad to have been able to secure this important debate today after many attempts at the adjournment debate ballot. It concerns a wa local waste to energy facility whose planning permission to be built in my uh, local uh, constituency in concert was soundly rejected uh, by Durham County Councillors uh, last year. This rejection came after thousands of local residents objected to the proposed waste to energy plant uh, in, Delves in the Delves Lane area of my constituency on the Houndsgill Industrial Estate. This movement uh, was spearheaded uh, by the unwavering hard work of huge numbers of local people, but particularly I'd like to thank my local Delves Lane councillors, uh, Michelle Watson and Angela Sterling, who I backed up right from the start in their campaign. But this was a real community effort and thousands and thousands of people got involved, really pushing objections and leading lots of local groups. And while I acknowledge that Members of Parliament have no specific powers with regard to local planning permissions and council decisions, I have been non nonetheless blown away by the, just the huge outpouring from local people, local mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, grandparents, residents, who have coalesced around an issue that they see as very important to our local community. It has been incredible to see uh, and has marked another occasion when hundreds of local people have come together and have made me incredibly proud to be the Member of Parliament for North West Durham. However, the specific purpose of this debate is not to celebrate, sadly, a hard-fought win. Instead, it occurs against the shadow of a, a, a potential appeal, this appeal being prepared against Durham County Council's decision to reject the building of the plant. As a result of the uh, reignition of this local debate against that backdrop of the potential appeal, I decided to conduct a survey of my local constituents' views last week. And in just a couple of days, I've received hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of responses. And a pattern has emerged, Mr Deputy Speaker, but I can summarise it pretty quickly. They're saying that no means no when it comes to the proposed concert incinerator. They want their views to be listened to. They do not want the result of their local democratic action by the council to be overturned by those who seek to ignore them. And I'll read a couple of comments that constituents posted in response to my survey. One constituent explained that the planning committee made their views clear, as have the people of concert, and that decision needs to be respected. Another explained that the plant will cause noise, next to houses, schools, local health facilities and clean air, right, on the, uh, right in, the, uh, in between major um, parts of residential areas of the town. Another puts it even more concisely and confirms that the concert incinerator has no place in our town and we do not want it here. And I can say that from the surveys and work that I conducted, well over 95% of people who have responded are absolutely implacably opposed uh, to this. It is clear to me that after synthesising all these views uh, and also looking and asking about people's views on what we should do instead, that actually the uh, people of my constituency are actually pretty behind the general drift of government policy. The government believes in reduce, reuse, recycle. That's the priority about what we're driving, not, not blight and burn. And it's pretty clear that that's what is being proposed. The government's also done a great job in recent years in really highlighting the environmental agenda. We've just been led COP26 in Glasgow, really driving through, not just for Britain, but internationally, a desire to see emissions reduced and help to protect the environment. Hundred, over 100 countries have now committed to ending deforestation. We've seen a big shift away from carbon-intensive uh, uh, power generation, an end to coal 
uh, new coal financing. 200 companies agreed to, uh, on the pact to keep 1.5 degrees alive, and along with cutting methane emissions by 30%. And it's particularly interesting when you just look at how far we've come. Britain has led the world in trying to reduce our carbon emissions. And one of those things was to see a reduction, and, and, and that, that shift recently has been even more stark. When the UK took over the leadership of COP a couple of years ago, only around 30% of the world was covered by these new targets. That figures at now around 90%. The government's also been keen on really pushing forward sensible environmental changes um, and things like animal welfare and the Kept Animals Bill, which I've supported in this House. But this doesn't mean I don't think we should. We, we, we don't want to jump down the position of wanting to immediately ban all uh, incineration at all. There is a case for it in a limited number of circumstances, particularly when we're thinking about uh, the need for certain medical waste and things like that to have to go through incineration. But what this is driving for, and what the government's driving for, is to see a two-thirds reduction in the amount of waste sent to incineration and to landfill by 2030. So why start to create? new facilities to look at this. It doesn't even look like it'll be a long-term solution for the communities I represent and even potentially for the developers. Instead, we need to be concentrating on using less and less each year. So, as you can see, Mr Deputy Speaker, the government's demonstrated its uh, commitment to the environment and, I really, and so have my constituents. Everybody is in agreement, my constituents, the government, that uh, are all in, all in agreement on the unattractiveness and, the, and the, actually the increasing lack of need uh, as we push forwards with our agenda for the need for incinerators. But how did we end up in the place where we are today? Well, uh, I, looked at, I looked through the County Durham plan uh, from 2019. And there had been an indication that basically this land was going to be designated for industrial use. And the only stipulation which really was imposed on potential use as an incinerator was that a degree of restraint against incineration was said to be, uh, was, is, that's the only wording really in that document on page 256. So we've sort of been left high and dry by a plan that sort of, the, while the rest of the country has moved on, while we've moved on, environmentally as a country and while local people have become implacably opposed and during that time large numbers of new housing developments have been proposed within half a mile of the site hundreds of new houses going up so today I'm calling on the developer to withdraw their appeal and instead to respect the decisions of the democratically elected councillors and of my constituents there's almost total unanimity amongst my constituents on backing the government's plan to reuse, reduce, recycle, and we want to see as little possible sent to our landfills or sent for incineration. Of course, there's always going to be a very small need for incineration of that things like medical waste as part of a diverse package, but it should be used in very limited circumstances. The general direction of the government is taking is one of reducing waste year on year, and that's what my constituents want to see. Building more incineration facilities is antithetical to the broader government's narrative and its environmental aims. Aims strongly supported not only by my constituents, but by people across the country, and I believe on all sides of the House. And whilst I do understand like the, that the Minister, like myself, has no specific role in these individual planning cases, and this is obviously a matter for continued debate between the council and private firms. What I do want to ask the minister is if he will take a broader look at incineration and the government's approach to it, and if he will also just reflect on the views of my local councillors, supported by myself, and on those of my constituents in his response to my debate tonight. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And can 